Today we're talking about a serious conversation about something that a lot of parents are worried about. A lot of football players are obviously worried about concussions. Jesse Harper is the CEO of I1 Biometrics. Uh, Jesse, thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about the issue overall. I think um, we're hearing more and more about concussions, mm -hmm. especially in football, but it's, it's really sports related. Uh, 1.6 to 3.8 million sports and recreation related concussions in the U.S. each year. I mean, that's a staggering number. That's quite a range, isn't it? And the reason it's 1.6 to 3.8 is because over 80% of concussions go unrecognized and undiagnosed. And that's the biggest problem. It's such a hard thing for us to be able to nail down and say that was a concussion. Even our vernacular doesn't support that. You got a ding, you got your bell rung, et cetera. Uh, and it's hidden, it's a hidden issue in sport. Yeah, I mean, these uh, stats, fewer than 10% of sports-related concussions involve a loss of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So as you're pointing out, you could have a kid who who gets hit and is concussed and goes back in. Exactly right. That happened earlier this year. Shane Morris at Michigan uh, took a large hit. He also had an ankle injury at the time. The athletic trainers and sideline staff said they never saw it. He continued to play, actually came out for a second to get checked on his ankle, put back in. They realized later he was concussed clearly. Uh, and on Monday, they, they came out and announced that it was a, quite a scandal. And you have the recent story of the Ohio State University football player, Costa uh, Car George, 22 years old, um, found dead uh, from suicide. The link between head injuries and suicides, uh, that seems to be a, an examination, an investigation now. Yeah, you're seeing more and more research going on about the link between head injury and depression, which of course then may lead to suicide. Uh, tragic story that came out of Ohio State. Certainly, you know, tough for the family, tough for the team. Uh, it's not unique. You know, you're seeing NFL players with uh, being diagnosed post-mortem with CTE. You're hearing of rampant depression that's occurring within the NFL after they retire. It's a real concern. So tell me what your company does and the product you have. So I1 Biometrics, we make a vector mouth guard. It's a mouth guard that in real time detects the head impacts that occur on the field of play, sends it wirelessly to the sideline. So like what happened for Shane at Michigan does not happen. It alerts that staff in real time that an impact occurred and then they can insert their medical opinion. So how does it work? <laughs> so think of it like a smartphone in your mouth. It has much of the same technology. So accelerometers, gyroscopes and the like. And it does a 3D map of the player's head in real time and sends it over. So it tells not only how hard they got hit, but where on the head they got hit. The knowing is the important part. Mm -hmm. Knowing that uh, what, what the status of that player is. What about the protection? Is it, is it better now? So the sport is moving in the right direction and public opinion and, and awareness on the head impact and, and concussion issue is at an all time high. So you're seeing shift in policy, you're seeing shift in equipment manufactured, uh, coaching styles, the NCAA limits the number of full impact practices a week that has not trickled down to the youth and high school level yet. So they're still doing more practices than is allowed at the higher levels. Two a days in the summer and sure. Sure, I mean, in, in season, they're going four or five days a week of full contact, and it's just increased exposure. Yeah. Is this going to reach a, a critical mass, do you think, where it changes our society or that sport? I love the sport of football, and I certainly do not want to see it um, torn down and, and softened to a level that uh, it doesn't recognize, it's not recognizable to today. Uh, however, we need to do a better job in keeping these players safe. And that's, as I said, policy, equipment, things, sensors like we have, uh, baseline concussion assessment testing. We need to do a better job to mitigate risk to these athletes. You know, football is not alone in causing injury, and most people realize it's a contact and a collision sport. but. Soccer is usually seen as the opposite to that in the risk profile. And women's soccer has the second highest incident rate of concussion, second only to football. So yeah. it's not unique, it's just it's where the awareness is right now. So obviously the mouth guard for any sport, um, and it's just something that you put in just like a regular mouth guard. Yeah, so there's no buttons, there's no blinky lights, there's nothing like that. The player puts it in. It has what's called capacitive in-mouth sensing. Think of it like you touch your screen on your phone, it knows that you've touched it. It knows when it's in your mouth and turns it on. Pop it out, it shuts it off. There's nothing that a player has to do other than wear the mouth guard and play. Uh, and then all that comes wirelessly. How much does it cost? $199 per player. Per player. Mm -hmm. um, is it getting 
picked up a lot? I'm it is, know. it is. So we had a really good year this year. Uh, we're not commercial. Uh, that's actually starting at the start of the new year here. Uh, but we did some ongoing testing with LSU football, learned a lot down there, uh, which was a good time. Uh, now we're starting to get great pickup at the Division One level and high school level as we move forward with our pre-sales. Well, what about the school? What do they have to invest as far as the you know, seeing real time what the data is coming back. So there's a one time upfront where you have to buy, you know, the computer comes with it and the software and all of that. It's just under $5,000 for that. And that's a one time and then after that it's just the mouth guard cost. Um, something we didn't talk about, the material of the mouth guard is completely different. Mouth guards are in many ways chew toys. They don't last very long. And so we had to address that. So we're working with ExxonMobil on a new elastopolymer that we have that um, allows the mouth guard to be more durable. So it's gonna last longer, which was of critical importance so that the value's there. What's the upside that you see uh, you know, down the road as you get more and more of these out there in schools and, and football teams around the country? Long term, the, the play is in the data. So we're still at the early side of understanding from a research perspective, everything that causes a concussion leads to a concussion. And so collecting that data, being able to look at a 14 year old male football player in California versus a female soccer player in Pennsylvania is helpful uh, in understanding you know, where this goes. So we're really looking at this scalable long term data set um, that we're excited about. So it's not only immediate on the diagnosis front, but it's also long term to be able to deal with concussions and the after effects. It is, and it's also preventative in the sense that there's no product that prevents a concussion. I want to be clear on that. Uh, but what there is, is we're able to identify, because we do this heat map of a player's head, and we're able to see those players that utilize their head improperly to maybe drop the boom and run through the, through the line. Uh, the coach can identify those as coachable moments, see the history of those players, and then coach them during the week, potentially avoiding an injury for them and potentially avoiding a penalty for the team. Well, the company is I1 Biometrics. Jesse Harper is the CEO. Well, good luck. We'll Thank be you. watching. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.